Hi, and welcome to Faith in Flower. If you're new here, I'm Robin. We live just north of Austin, Texas, and as you may know, we had a pretty significant ice storm this week. I talk a lot about food storage on my channel, and our family tries to maintain about a one month to three month food supply. We're actually working on building that back up after moving into our new home. The items in here are always moving into rotation so that we are always eating what we store. And right now I am taking items out of here, putting them in the smaller pantry area near our kitchen so that they're a little bit easier accessible. And I'm also taking stock or inventory to see what I need to buy at the store. This was actually day one of the ice storm that we had this week in Texas. And uh, it's a great opportunity for me to talk to you about why I think it's important to have a little bit of extra food storage. So when we've had ice storms like this in the past, similar to hurricanes and other weather events, oftentimes the stores are closed or even if they're open, it may be impossible for you to get to the store. In this case, I knew the roads were gonna be very icy, but because we have this food storage, there isn't going to be any need for us to get out in that. And we also won't interfere with other people who aren't prepared and do need to stock up. Another benefit is that if there is a food shortage as a result of this weather crisis, we are in a position to help our neighbors and friends who may need items as well. Besides that, in this age of inflation and very high grocery prices, it's a great way to save money. Whenever items that we use regularly go on sale, if they are something that's shelf stable, I can buy one or two for now and one or two for later. And that way I can build our storage up in a way that is economical. And therefore when I need those ingredients, I will have them on hand at a lower price and I won't have to go to the store and pay whatever the price currently is, which right now seems to be rising day by day. Weather emergencies are the reason why I started doing this years ago. We lived in North Carolina. We often had hurricanes. We had ice storms there too and snowstorms at different times. And I learned that this was a really helpful thing to do. And of course that was reinforced during the pandemic but could also be very helpful if you had some sort of financial crisis like a job loss or <laughs> right now the inflation that we're experiencing at the grocery store makes this a really great way to help save some money. I have a whole playlist on our prepper pantry, so if you're interested in that, I will have those videos linked down in the description box. Today I am refilling a lot of the containers that I like to keep in the pantry here in our kitchen and one of those is bread flour. So we mostly eat gluten free because our son needs to eat gluten free but my husband and I still enjoy bread and I make sourdough bread and so bread flour is something that I like to keep a few extras of in our prepper pantry. Bread flour was really hard to get during the pandemic, so when I did get some, I got a little extra and I vacuum sealed it. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm unpacking that. But because I basically sucked all of the air out of it, it's a little bit clumpy. So I wanted to put it in this mixing bowl and break it up with a whisk, sort of give it a little fluff before I store it. And you can also see a little oxygen packet there that I didn't realize I had stuck in to help get some of the oxygen out. And this was a great way for me to keep it a little bit longer past the expiration date. Because there was still a little bit of flour in my glass container, I poured that into a different bowl because what I wanna do is put the newest on the bottom and use the oldest first, if that makes sense. There's also a little bit in the plastic container that you can see just behind the bowl that didn't fit into the container when I opened that bag. So I'm gonna make sure that gets in there as well. 
So if you're familiar with good practices for a gluten-free kitchen, you'll notice that I made a pretty big mistake here. <laughs> it would have been better for me to deal with all of this flour that contains gluten after I had taken care of all the items that are gluten-free, just to make sure that I don't cross-contaminate everything. I did clean everything really thoroughly before opening any of the gluten-free oats or the sugar or anything that I would use for Peyton's food, but <laughs> I could have saved myself a lot of trouble by waiting until the end. And I also wound up using more, you know, bowls and things like that that I had to clean afterwards as well. But I'm just kind of pointing that out because I know some of you will. <laughs> and also just to caution you, if maybe you're new to having, you know, to prepare gluten-free items in your kitchen, that cross-contamination is something that you really need to look out for. I worked on this inside today the ice storm was starting outside and it was fairly mild on the first day we got a lot of freezing rain and all of the surfaces were starting to ice up the temperature was really dropping and it wasn't predicted to go above freezing for at least two or three more days <laughs> so we were trying to make any preparations in advance that we could Having a prepper pantry really does help me take care of the food issue, but I also have to think about how I would cook things. We only have electricity in our house. We don't have any gas. We have a camp stove that we can use. We also have a grill, and I like to use inside the fondue set <laughs> to warm up things. That works really well for making tea or just warming up something quickly in a pot. We do have a fireplace and some firewood, and we also have an RV, which does have propane. So if it got really bad, we could go into our RV and use the propane heat. I can also cook in there. Of course, preparing to make sure you have fresh water to drink is very important. And we made sure that all of our devices were fully charged so that in the case of losing electricity, we would be able to use our phones and laptops at least as long as we have the battery charge. Freezing pipes are a real issue here in Texas because the homes were not made to withstand these really cold temperatures that we've had these past few years. The water pipes are often not insulated very well here in Texas. And so when water gets in there and freezes, it expands and that causes the pipes to burst. Some things we've done that were successful are keeping the cabinet doors open in the bathrooms, in the kitchen, wherever there's a sink so that the warm air from inside your home can circulate under there and keep it warm. Also, there are many things you can do for the outside faucets to keep them from bursting because that's where they're exposed. So putting some sort of pipe warmers on there or just insulating them, there are some insulated covers that you can get and also letting them drip so that the water runs a little bit are great ways to sort of combat this problem and we've used all of those things and so far so good. We also expected that we might have some broken limbs or downed trees so having the chainsaw ready to go with the oil and fuel that it needs is a good idea and of course things like generators and kerosene heaters are really helpful but you need to make sure that you have the fuel you need for those things in advance.
as I'm restocking our kitchen pantry, I take a couple of minutes to sort of take stock here and see if there's anything that I need to put on order. For example, the type of brown rice flour that I really like to use, I order from Amazon or add to my list for my next grocery trip. While I was at it, I wanted to go ahead and decant a few other items. Our dishwasher soap is something that I like to decant into a glass container. I just find it a little bit easier to use, so I need to refill that today too. I've mentioned here before how much I love the Truly Free laundry products. I've been using their dishwasher soap and it's phenomenal. <laughs> so if you're not really happy with yours and you'd like to give them a try, I highly recommend it. And I'll have a link for you down in the description box. like buying spices somewhat in bulk or at least in larger containers it's usually more economical that way and so I'll store those in the top of this cabinet and then I will decant some into smaller containers that I can keep in my spice drawer especially the ones that I use on a regular basis in my last video, you guys gave me so many great suggestions down in the comment section about what to get at Costco since we're new members there and spices was on a lot of people's lists. So I will be looking for all of my favorite spices on my next trip and stock up on some of those. cleaned up all of the extra containers and the bowls that I used, I was looking out the window trying to assess the ice situation outside. And on the first day, it really wasn't too terrible yet, but I knew that we had a couple days left of really cold temperatures and a lot of precipitation coming. So just sort of making little checklists in my head about what I wanted to make sure that we got accomplished before we lost power or before things were too icy for us to get out in case we needed to. I had one last thing I wanted to decant and that was our extra rice. This is gonna go back into our prepper pantry, but I really prefer keeping it in a Tupperware container as opposed to the bag that it came in. I feel that it's a little bit better protected from critters coming from the outside, bugs or even mice. And if there were a weevil outbreak or some kind of bug outbreak from the actual rice, it would be contained as well.
time, the temperatures had dropped down into the 20s and I knew we were gonna be in for a very cold night. So I wanted something really comforting for dinner and we love curries. And I discovered a butter chicken recipe that you can make in the Instant Pot a while ago. In fact, I think I showed it on my channel, but I'm gonna link it down in the description box in case you missed it. This was so good. This recipe was a definite keeper and it's so easy as well. I decided to make a double batch, so you'll see me doubling the recipe here. It made enough for us to have three really good sized meals, one for tonight, one we were gonna have for leftovers, and the third I was going to freeze for a future meal. I find that when I make things in the Instant Pot, it's really easy to double it lots of times, and that way I basically give myself a night off in the future. my instant pot on my stovetop so that I can take advantage of the vent. For things like this recipe where I'm going to be sauteing some of the ingredients, it's nice to be able to use the vent and also when I need to release the steam I can use the vent as well. I haven't had any issues with doing this on my induction cooktop. I think it would also be fine on a glass cooktop and in our previous home where I had a gas cooktop, I just put a cutting board over the grates and then set the Instant Pot on top. I love my Instant Pot. In fact, I have two. <laughs> I have the larger one that is an eight quart and then the smaller three quart one. And I find that it works really well, especially for making things like rice, which I'm doing tonight. And if you haven't tried rice in an Instant Pot, you definitely should. It is so easy. It's just equal parts rice and water. Add a little bit of salt. And for this, I'm using jasmine rice. It only takes four minutes in the Instant Pot and it comes out perfect every time.
This is such a good butter chicken recipe and it really couldn't be easier. So if you like curry even just a little bit, you should really give this one a try. So day two of the ice storm, we awoke to no electricity and the sound of trees cracking and large limbs falling to the ground. Our house was pretty chilly and we didn't know how long we might be without power. So I wanted to do what I could to warm us up. And so I made a pot of tea with using our fondue set. And I've done this before, it works surprisingly well and I can just set my teapot on there and we have hot water for tea you can even make coffee or hot cocoa and we enjoyed warming up with that on this chilly morning of day two of the Texas ice storm things were beautiful. <laughs> we had gotten a lot of precipitation overnight and a lot of damage too. There were branches down, but there was a lot of beauty. Everything had a casing of ice and just sort of gleamed. I think it would have been really beautiful if the sun had come out, but it stayed really cold. They were predicting a lot more precipitation and temperatures that were not supposed to go above freezing for a few more days. It was sad to see the damage that was already happening to the trees and knowing that more ice would probably just make it worse <laughs> was a little bit nerve-wracking. But so far, so good. We were without power on the second day for about six hours in the morning. It came back on for a few hours and then we lost it again for probably another three hours or so. And then we had power for the rest of the day, which was a huge blessing. We were really impressed that our area was able to get the power up and going and maintain it with all that was happening outside. breaking. Here we go.
power did return, our HVAC system was completely frozen and the fan couldn't move. So I brought some boiling water out to Patrick and he thawed everything out and got it moving again. He was able to get the fan running again and also was really careful to get the ice off of the intake, the sides of the HVAC system so that we could have heat again and so that we didn't wind up damaging our system during this. And it was so nice to have heat on in the house again and you just never realize how dependent you are on electricity until you lose it. Patrick also got the car running to move it out of the way because we had some large branches and by the next morning, we were really happy with that decision because one of those came down right where the car used to sit. You might be wondering why we left the car out. It's because we wanted to be able to leave. Our garage door is really huge and heavy and if we lost power, we wouldn't be able to open it. So leaving one car out, we thought was the best decision. And as you can see, the destruction was pretty bad on that third day. We did get quite a bit more ice overnight. The temperature stayed very cold and so many of our trees suffered. It's just a very loud crack pop sound as the branch breaks. And then it sounds like a bunch of glass breaking as it hits the ground. We were really sad for all of the damage to the trees, but really grateful that nothing hit the house and did any damage to the house or the car. We had a lot more tree damage in the backyard as well, and one of them hit our fence and did a little bit of damage there, but this is something that will be easily repaired and we're just glad that it wasn't a lot worse. Also, by some miracle, we managed to keep power all day on the third day, which was a huge blessing. thawed out pretty quickly on the third day so we took a little walk through our neighborhood and we noticed some down power lines and a lot of broken branches and trees down in our neighbor's yard as well. With all of the tree damage and the power lines down no one's house seemed to be affected which we were so grateful for. With temperatures expected to go up on that fourth day, we knew we were gonna be really busy getting rid of all of this debris. so much for spending your time with me here today. If you were affected by the storms, let me know down in the comments. I would love to be praying for you. And I just want to let you know, we appreciate your thoughts and prayers so much. We received some really sweet comments from some of you. And I want to let you know that we are doing great and we felt your prayers. If you enjoyed today's video, don't leave without giving me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. We would love to have you join our Faith and Flower community. Subscribing is absolutely free and easy. All you have to do is click on my picture and be sure to activate the bell icon so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. I'll be right back here next Sunday at two o'clock central time. So come over and join me. And until then, have a wonderful week.